Hey everybody, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott, thank you for tuning in today and thank you for your support. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the new Rhino High Fidelity reissue of the cars and saying a little bit about uh, the rollout of the High Fidelity series and the first two titles, um, but mainly focusing on the cars. I have done a shootout of three pressings of the cars um, on another system. So I'll have information about what I discovered there. And the main part of the review will be my own evaluation on my own system of the Rhino versus the MoFi. Um, so stay tuned for that. Before I get started, if you're new and haven't already, please consider subscribing. Hit subscribe, like, and notification, and you'll be sure to get notified of any new content that comes up. So the Rhino High Fidelity series was announced a little while back. It, it is a very exciting announcement because Rhino is the catalog division of Warner Electra Atlantic. A huge umbrella of titles are available for the Rhino series. And this is very exciting. Rhino has also taken cues from the audiophile reissue series that they've been licensing out to, such as Analog Productions, MoFi, and so forth and kind of distilled everything that an audiophile would want in high quality reissue at a price that is fair. Um, they're using all analog mastering and, and uh, tape. So uh, everything is AAA cut from the tape and they've chosen the noted mastering engineer, Kevin Gray, to do the cutting and mastering. Um, and they are presenting them in beautiful stout, stout and style gatefold jackets that are just amazing. So this all comes in at a $40 price point. So all good news, really exciting. I'm very interested in seeing what the next titles are. Um, there are a couple of things about the rollout that did bother me initially. I was going to make a video about it, but I decided to kind of hold off. Um, very briefly, the idea of having it a numbered limited edition <clears throat> is, to me, is kind of like, I thought we were beyond that. Um, you know, the other major companies are, are doing unlimited um, pressings like Kraft, Blue Note, and so forth. Um, they own the tapes. They can keep pressing it. It seems a little silly to keep it at a certain number. So these are limited to 500. I mean, I'm sorry, 5,000, 5,000. Um, so, you know, it's like that creates artificial FOMO and I fell for it. I bought both of them without a, without a hesitation. So it does work, but I don't think it's necessary. The other thing is um, the idea of a single source for these. Um, you can only get them through the Rhino store or some of their affiliates. Um, you can't get them through Amazon, you can't get them through the Audifile retailers. So you're kind of locked into getting it through Rhino and they are not well known for their customer service. If there's problems and some people are experiencing this already, there's uh, an endless round of uh, automated emails and no one to talk to. So this has to be worked on um, if they're gonna do it this way. Apparently, the specifics of the series are open to change. So right now it's eight titles a year um, and they're one jazz title and one rock title each time. I hope that changes, but we have plenty of great jazz um, titles right now from other series. I would prefer them to focus on rock titles. So uh, we'll see what happens there. But uh, all things are looking good. Um, there, oh, there was one other thing the mailer. This is what it came in and this is not adequate. Um, you've probably seen plenty of horror stories already. Uh, mine arrived good enough that I didn't have to um, request a replacement but they all had dinged corners because there's no protection whatsoever in this and this has to be changed if they're going to do an audiophile series. The first part of the evaluation, I went to Osvaldo at Let There Be Sound to do sound clips for me, and we did an evaluation there. It was originally supposed to be just the MoFi and the 
Rhino, but he um, realized he had a Nautilus pressing of this album, so we pulled that out too, just for curiosity's sake. And although we had limited time to do a full shootout, we did focus on one song, My Best Friend's Girlfriend. And uh, the, the clips are below if you want to hear uh, what we heard in that evaluation. I was quite surprised. The, the Nautilus really held its own against the others and surpassed the MoFi. Um, on My Best Friend's Girlfriend, we felt like the Nautilus had the edge over the Rhino as well. But I wouldn't take that, I would take that as an interesting anecdote because I did not hear the whole album on all three pressings. Um, I did not take home the Nautilus because uh, he was a little reluct reluctant to give it away. Um, he doesn't, uh, he has kind of a rule that he doesn't lend out his albums and I totally understand that. So um, I came home with my own two pressings and did further evaluations between those two. But uh, the Nautilus is kind of a dark horse in this race. I wouldn't discount it. Uh, I thought it sounded excellent. And particularly after a deep cleaning, it sounded spectacular. Uh, the Rhino also did sound spectacular as well. Um, I couldn't determine a preference at that time. I felt like the Nautilus may be the better in that cut, but that was the only cut we really focused on. So take that with as you will and listen to the files. There's also a video ABC comparison of that day that you can link to. Uh, when I got home though, I got to listen to both in depth. I, I listened to the MoFi all week leading up to this. And when I got back from Oswaldo's, I had my first listen to the Rhino on my system. Um, to put it in a nutshell, the the MoFi fell down to second place easily. Um, the MoFi presents itself as a very clear, precise, polite listen. Um, it kind of has a veil over it. it. It sounds a little distant. It has, it doesn't have the drive that's necessary to, <clears throat> to project this album properly. It is a pretty picture of the album. It is not the rock pop album that we want to hear for the cars. It's in isolation. It sounds very nice. And that's kind of the case with a lot of MoFi's in isolation. They do sound very nice, good, quiet pressing, nice separation, but there was something about it. And it, it became apparent when I got the Rhino on the turntable that the MoFi was a bit muffled, rolled off, um, didn't have impact and drive. It kind of sat there and it didn't really get your toe tapping. It was something pretty to listen to and look at, but it just didn't affect me the way I would think the car's debut album should affect you, which is to just blow you away and get your toe tapping and get into the groove and feel like a rock and roll experience. Um, the Rhino, on the other hand, was stunning. I was so surprised, not because I don't trust Kevin Gray, but I just thought, I hope they don't overdo this, you know, and they didn't. It sounds like a master tape. It sounds like you're in the studio. It has a 3D holographic sound that just is so involving. I don't think I've enjoyed listening to the cars as much as I did with the Rhino. It brought out so many things, so many details that had gone unnoticed before, <clears throat> but it wasn't in a way that was in your face or harsh, <clears throat> excuse me, or anything like that. It was in a totally natural way. It had drive and punch that just made these songs soar. That one, two, three punch of the opening side sounds absolutely amazing. Um, the bass is nice and deep. The top end is clear and crystalline. It has a, it has a drive. It's hard to explain, but it punches. It punches. I was waiting to see out of all of these, which one would hit me like this And the Rhino did and it made my toe tap. I mean, that's kind of an indication to me that something is going right. And I was like, this is great. The Rhino is superb. It is my listening, my go-to listening copy from here on out. Um, 
I wouldn't discount the Nautilus. I think it is an interesting alternative and I wish I had had it for my own personal comparison here, but the Rhino is a no-brainer. Get it for $40 before it disappears because it is probably the definitive copy of the cars. And I'm so glad to have it. Um, corner dings and all, I don't really care. It sounds magnificent. And the pressing was very, very good. Clean, clean, clean. A uh, couple of ticks on a run out, that was about it. And yeah, so I'm very excited about the series. Um, let me know what you think, if you've done any comparisons or you've gotten a new one. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Until next time, I'm Scott for The Pressing Matters. Have a great day.